Hi, this is Alterio Fasoli from Umos, and today I want to see if AI can create a natural photographic looking portrait image of a woman. Today I will show you just the first steps I took to create an image of a woman, a portrait image, with a Sony A1 camera I don't own and a Sony 50mm 1.2 GM lens, which also I don't own. It would be stunning if I can achieve that. Imagine you save like five, six thousand dollars by don't buying the gear and just creating it on uh, in a couple of seconds and on AI. Scary and stunning at the same time. I will now walk you through the steps to how to create such an image with Midjourney. Um, I will use the following command, asking Midjourney to create a lifestyle portrait of a young woman and we will see what Midjourney AI creates without me giving any uh, additional information like the gear I'm using, uh, the style I'm using and whatever. As you can see, the first results, results I get, those four examples of portrait of a young woman, they really look like nothing photographic, uh, not realistic at all. And now let's try to improve this. I'm adding to the to my request the info that this image was shot on a Sony A1 with a Sony 50mm 1.2 GM lens. As you can see, the images now are way better, look more realistic. It took basically it searched to uh, to the web for. Um, images shot with the Sony A1, the 50mm GM lens, and created that kind of look. So that's already impressive and freaking at the same time. And if you wonder, would the look change if you would, for example, shoot it with a Fuji camera, then let's try this one. The res results look like indeed a little bit different compared to the Sony uh, image portray <laughs> created by AI. Also in that case, Midjourney looks for uh, Fuji X-T5 kind of images that he found on the web and tries to add that kind of style and colors. And I think like, for example, the image here and the image, this one also, they uh, look, could look more Fuji-like than the other images uh, from the Sony. This is the image created by Midjourney AI with the Fuji look. And here we have the image created uh, by Midjourney with the Sony A1 50mm 1.2 GM lens uh, look. So you still see what, what I learned from those early examples is that Midjourney is good but not perfect. It's very hard to create a natural looking image. And moreover, it has a lot of distortions. Like for example, on this image, you see that the eyes are not quite the same. So you would have to keep regenerating the image till it gets more uh, realistic and it does uh, you might get rid of some of those distortions and errors also midjourney mix has a lot of difficulty in general with people like for example if you see um if you ask midjourney to create an image of a person uh, doing something with the hands you will see the hands like with six or seven fingers or really distorted so at the moment we analog a classic, <laughs> let's say classic photographers um, don't have to be worried about that particular um, aspect when you, for example, shoot people. Mid journey gets is impressive, but still far away from creating 100% real uh, error free images. It might get there, and it might be also that while I'm learning new commands. I, I learned that Midjourney is more powerful than imagined. I will let you know if that happens, I will make a new video. What I think is really impressive with Midjourney is all the classic product images and stock photography images. Um, there, the Midjourney really does an excellent job. And I think like, if you think from a business point of view, all that stock photography will, need, maybe not all, but a lot of it will get replaced by AI generated images. Also some landscape images I saw were impressive. Before we end uh, that short intro into uh, AI portrait photography, uh, I want to let you know that it's really a rabbit hole what, what Midjourney and other AI tools can do. Because of course, uh, what you saw now is just a, uh, a first tentative with short description, but you can add 
a ton of description and you can also ask uh, for example AI to have a, sh um, a short or long uh, depth of field uh, you can change the bouquet you can uh, change the light uh, for the portrait for example by adding low key as an uh, uh, as an option and you can even uh, ask uh, AI to use a style from a known photographer so let's try for example Portrait of a young woman shot on a Sony A1 with a 50mm GM lens, shot by any Leibovitz with natural light, natural color, or with a film style, highly detailed, photographic, hyper realistic and whatever. So I'm doing this and here you see the results I got and it's quite impressive. It really has something of that Leibovitz style and she will probably not be happy so I don't know how all that copyright issue will turn out because there, uh, there's a lot of discussion if those AI images are to be considered new creations or if they infringe some kind of copyright in terms of st if you use for example a style from a certain photographer. As an add-on I will show you some examples of portray created in a completely different style that I actually liked and I'm trying to dig in at the moment. Like a portrait of a young woman in a shot with a Yashica 50mm lens. And here are the images created with the Yashica style and I found that style to be the closest to a natural looking portrait. That image really is nice and I think if you would elaborate it further on Photoshop you can even improve it. And um, as soon as I have more skills and I can get better results, I will post a new video. Uh, to end, one more thing. Um, this is really super basic, but you can work out a ton of information when you send your prompt commands. There are even tools like, for example, uh, that Mid Journey Prompt Helper, where you that helps you to create a uh, uh, the coding to insert the mid journey. You uh, choose, for example, what kind of light you want to have. You can choose uh, the kind of camera and uh, lens. For example, if you want a pinhole lens look, the depth of field of the image, if you want it more realistic or less realistic, and then you just uh, copy that code, insert it, and you see the results. So what did I learn from my first digging into those images? Um, first, um, it's both impressive, but also uh, still not there. Um, in many aspects, we are far away from um, creating real uh, natural looking uh, images without uh, arrows or without uh, false colors and whatever. Uh, but it's, I'm sure this will improve a lot in time. I think in one year from now, we will look at way more better looking images. Uh, I think, he, it might be even possible in one year from now to create images like, for example, with a Sony A1 camera that costs $6,000 with a 500mm GM lens that costs $12,000 and have that kind of look with that kind of bouquet, with that, that kind of colors. And it's uh, quite a big thing. Um, still, I don't think it will kill the art of the, the individual art of photography. I think we will always be needed on this world, but um, we might can use it to um, get some ideas to improve our photography. It will also, uh, I think AI will replace mass cheap mass photography, but not high end, real innovative artistic photography. Uh, at least not, I cannot imagine it doing this for the time being. Anyway, if you want to me to uh, dig further, show you more examples, like for example, landscape examples or um, product photo examples, uh, then subscribe to this channel, hit the notification button, and I uh, see you soon, folks.